Welcome to this program by The Ohio State University on Coordination of Care for the Early Identification of Lung Cancer that was presented by a panel of experts from the university. Each panelist spoke about a different topic in the early identification of lung cancer. In this video, Dr. David Carbone discusses the importance of screening for the early detection of lung cancer. Thank you all for being here. I'm David Carbone. I'm a medical oncologist, and the purpose of the initiatives we're going to talk about is to detect lung cancer early. It's a shocking fact that in spite of a randomized large trial more than 10 years ago that proved that lung cancer mortality was decreased by low-dose helical CT scanning, the screening rate for lung cancer screening is far lower than the other common cancers. And you can see here, colorectal, breast, and cervical cancers have 60 or 70 percent of eligible individuals receiving screening, whereas nationwide, only about 6 percent of people eligible for lung cancer screening actually get screened. And that's in spite of the fact that lung cancer is still by far the number one cause of cancer death for both men and women in this country. So less than 10% of the high-risk population in Ohio undergoes uh, lung cancer screening. This compares Ohio and U.S. rates of smoking, where Ohio has a higher rate of smoking than the rest of the U.S. The lung cancer screening is a little bit higher. It turns out only about 20% of cases of lung cancer are diagnosed in early stages. And the majority of patients are diagnosed when they're not resectable. The five-year Ohio survival rate for lung cancer is only in the range of 20%, which is a little bit less than the U.S. average in spite of the fact that, that Ohio is among one of the 40 states whose Medicaid fee-for-service programs does cover a lung cancer screening. And recently, CMS expanded the eligibility criteria for lung cancer screening to start at age 50 with a 20-pack year smoking history. So this is how eligible patients come into a screening. By definition, a screening program assesses asymptomatic patients at high risk for lung cancer, the smokers, the over age 50. In my experience, if you have symptoms, if you're coughing up blood, then that becomes diagnostic and not screening. And it's really true that in lung cancer, you can have a grapefruit-sized mass in your lung that is totally asymptomatic. No cough, no shortness of breath, no pain. Typically, screening patients come in through their primary care provider, and then, if eligible, they should be referred to low-dose CT screening. In my experience, as opposed to many other screening technologies, lung cancer screening is one of the easiest, no IVs, no bowel preps, no smashing of body parts, it's quite easy. At Ohio State in 2021, in our screening program, we screened 2,042 patients. It should have been much higher than that, as I said. This was with this low-dose CT screening approach. And it should be mentioned that some people think, well, I got a chest X-ray, is that good enough? Chest X-rays actually have been studied and are shown not to be a very sensitive way of detecting early lung cancer. And then many patients that go through the lung cancer screening are detected to have some kind of abnormality in their lungs. It's crucial to involve your radiology and your pulmonary colleagues to determine which nodules need close follow-up or need immediate intervention. In 2021, of those patients, we diagnosed 68 lung cancer cases, a 3.3% positivity rate. In my experience, those patients are usually at the earliest stages where the tumors are most manageable and then get referred on to other specialists such as radiation therapists or thoracic surgeons. And now there's even a role for medical oncologists in most early stage lung cancers. So this shows the guidelines for eligibility to lung cancer screening. In 2013, the individuals from 55 to 80 were eligible with more than 30 pack years of smoking. These were expanded, uh, those with more than 20 pack years of smoking and over age 50 back in 2021, last year. 
unfortunately, this doesn't cover everybody. Lung cancer can occur even in never smokers, but people are getting CT scans uh, for other reasons, for cardiac reasons or after they have a car accident. And many times we find incidental uh, pulmonary nodules that turn out to be lung cancer. So in essence, these incidental pulmonary nodules are lung cancer screening in a screen-ineligible population. Dr. Carbone concluded the program by talking about implications to coordination of care, especially the need for a fully engaged multidisciplinary team as they have at The Ohio State University. So as we've tried to emphasize, and as is reflected in our panel here, the detection and management of findings of low-dose CT and lung cancer screening really uh, requires a multidisciplinary team. And we're very fortunate at our institution to have such a team that's highly interactive. In fact, the, in our oncology clinic, the thoracic surgeons, the pulmonologists, the medical oncologists are all in the same clinic area seeing their patients. And we have weekly meetings that are attended by all of those uh, specialists in addition to the research staff and, and uh, advanced practice providers. We have tried to implement a uh, structured reporting in the radiology reports that would be readily detected by the natural language processing software. We have tried to regularize our management of these based on objective scoring systems such as lung rads. In addition, this coordination, this data collection gives us the opportunity to conduct research in this population to better define eligibility criteria and uh, improve our uh, processes and outcomes. So the team that we have is partially represented here. These are the, the people involved in the different uh, specialties that form our multidisciplinary team. So in conclusion, I think we've tried to show that lung cancer screening can help identify a lung cancer at an early stage. The mortality reduction in the initial study, now 10 years old, was 20% in the NLST. And with modern technologies, our false diagnosis, our, our ability to assess nodules in the lung for their risk of malignancy is far improved. And our diagnostic procedures uh, that we have in order to determine whether a nodule needs intervention or not have dramatically improved. I think we do need to improve our clinical guidelines for recommendation of screening. As was said, screening has very specific smoking and age criteria, but if you look, many patients are diagnosed with lung cancer that don't even meet the screening criteria. In fact, about 20% of lung cancers are diagnosed in never smokers, and we currently don't have a screening process for those patients except through the incidental nodule uh, program. And I think the detection of early lung cancer gives a dramatic opportunity. We have to continually strive to improve the management of these nodules. And I think this multidisciplinary uh, collaboration and inter interaction of all the, the specialists we've talked about today really is, is crucial in optimizing the management of these patients. Look for more videos on the early identification of lung cancer from experts at The Ohio State University.